If you ever have run out of ideas during your design process and got stuck, then this video is for you because today we'll look at the workflow using Midjourney AI for design iterations. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll be using these two images. I have a high-tech facade. It has these metal projecting bits that has tension trusses connecting them together. And it's highly expressive arrangement, but I would like to test it a bit more and to see what other variations there are. So as a starting point, I'll go to my Discord dashboard, which Midjourney uses as its interface. I have, you can see a couple of images here that I've pre created for the previous projects that I was working on. But in this case, I want to upload a picture of those two images. Click enter and there I have them. So now that I have these two images uploaded into the chat, I'd like to tell Midjourney to start remixing them. So for that, I need to type imagine and a little rectangular window like this appears. So now what I wanna do is I wanna drag one of these, so hold and drag one of these images into this little rectangle. You'll see it expands. And then I want to follow this with some kind of prompt. It can be a word, even a letter, just so that Midjourney can generate an image. On its own, this is not gonna work. So I need to come up with some prompts. So I'll say, so I'll type in hi, tech architecture perhaps pen drawing, facade study, one of the big guns. So this is my prompt following the JPEG image. Let's click enter and see what happens. So this is my first result. I haven't tested these prompts or these images, but I'm quite impressed because you can see that, especially over here with these extension arms, tree-like branches, kind of picks up a little bit on what I wanted it to do, but not quite. One of the things about Midjourney is the first image that it produces is never gonna be the way I envisaged it. So I might need to do some tweaks on this. So let's try to recreate this image, but this time we'll add a bit more importance to the image itself rather than to prompt. So as before, let's type in imagine, followed by space. You'll see the rectangle appears here. Let's drag our image that we've dragged in before, followed by space, and then I'll copy this prompt again at the back. And this time I'll add the parameter that's called image weight. So two dashes, IW for image weight. And by default, it's 0.25, but I think the value goes as high as two. So I'll set it to the maximum and press enter. Okay, so this is my second attempt and you can see it's still a bit kind of 3D-ish. There's not much kind of facade repetition that I can see, but the drawing is a bit more clean now because it is referencing the style of my initial sketch, which is quite important for me. So now I have to tweak my prompt in order to kind of get the repetition that I'm after. I'm quite happy with the style, but I'm not happy with the results necessarily. I mean, this looks more like some kind of pipe exhaust ductwork in a building um, and it's kind of a bit more kind of imaginary and comic book like. Like. So I need a bit more of an architecture result. So, so let's try to alter our prompt a little bit. So the way Midjourney works picks up on the importance of the words at the front of the prompt a bit more than the back. So I'll put the pen drawing at the very back. I'll keep the image weight to two because I think I'm quite happy the way it works. I'm then gonna put high-tech architecture, Richard, Rogers and Norman Foster straight after high-tech architecture. And I might just put modular, modular facade, high-tech architecture. I thought with modular building facade, comma high-tech architecture. So fingers crossed, hopefully this is gonna produce a little bit better result. So this is the result. Again, it's not it's not heading the way I wanted to head, but what's interesting about this image is that it's added orange color, <laughs> which I didn't have before. Yeah, I think I need to try some more prompts to get this work. Okay, so this is the latest result. I've tried actually the second image that I had in my initial prompt over here. And then I've removed the Norman Foster and Richard Rogers. I've added that the facade has to be from steel glass, concrete, and in pen drawing. And then I've also added the word repetitive, which I think is a key. I think it gave me slightly better 
result is getting closer to the facade look. I'll try to regenerate this one more time. So I created yet another image using altered prompts and it got me to this result here. And some of these things are quite interesting because it picks up on the themes I had in my initial sketch, but then with a slightly different twist to them. So I could actually use some of these images to then iterate further. Now, I didn't explain why I have my iPad, but this is exactly why, so that I can take the images on the screen, quickly put them onto my iPad, or if you don't have an iPad, you can use, you know, paper or a trace paper, and then go over these sketches again uh, to iterate them. So I'll upscale a couple of these views that I liked, second and probably the fourth. I can save these images in, and then I'll just drop them into my iPad open them say in Procreate or you know whatever app that you might be using uh, to start editing it. And now I can decrease the opacity of the layer underneath and just start sketching uh, the ideas that I might have over the top. Now the thing with Midjourney is that it's a little bit like having an assistant. Um, it is quite a clever program but tailor it to your needs. You need to kind of be able to communicate with it effectively which essentially requires knowing how to create prompts which is an art form in its own right but it's also also requires understanding you know what kind of things it keeps come up with so that you know you kind of can test its capabilities I mean what's quite clear about this exercise is that it hasn't been trained on the high-tech details as much uh, especially with drawn style so I need to kind of compensate by um, envisaging what the possibility of some of these are and you know there's like a lot of free ideas that I got from this so for example the pattern of these trusses you know, I can use that and kind of duplicate it across and achieve the kind of repetition that I want using that um, pattern as an inspiration for me. For example like this, you can look some of this, these other images like this one here that has particularly this this kind of um, this kind of detail over here I find it's quite interesting because it picks up on the on the sort of idea that I had with these extension arms but in this case it's actually doubling them up and you can see that there's a an element here which I can kind of extend fo forward you know how practical this would be in real life I don't know but uh, it is definitely a source of inspiration and again I can copy and paste it a little bit of time in, in drawing time. And you know, I could go over this with a bit more finer detail, but hopefully this shows the principle of how you can envisage something in mid-journey, iterate it to the point where you're kind of happy with the result and it gives you enough inspiration, take it to the drawing app or, you know, piece of paper and then trace it over again. And this kind of allows the repetition of this process um, multiple times, uh, you know, with different prompts, you get different results. Um, over time as well, you'll kind of get to almost like a library of your own prompts that will help Help you effectively to kind of communicate to the app what you want to see and give you the results that you need uh, without hustling too much. So yeah, if you like this video, then you might also enjoy this video over here that talks about the kind of wider impact of AI on architectural industry and what it means for architects. And also you can check out this video right over here on the basics of how to use AI and generate prompts for effective visuals. So check one of those videos out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next time, bye-bye.